Do you go to church? No, not usually. Uh, no, I do not. Not as much as I used to, to tell you the truth. Did you used to go to church? At uh, one point in time, yeah, when I was little. I go to church like Christmas, Easter. I think that you can also still believe in God and not have to go to church. Why don't you go to church now? Because I went to church probably too much when I was a kid. Why don't you go to church? I'm usually hung over on Sundays. I work on Sundays. I don't. I don't have time. What's keeping you from going out? Um, just not my thing. I believe in more of like a spiritual one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. There's not really a religion that I found that I really felt connected to. I don't feel like it uh, really gives me a lot uh, in this day and age. I have too many uh, other worries. It's kind of a, a time commitment as well. For me, like I think it just works better just to do my own kind of thing. I find God's church very hypocritical. So therefore, I find God hypocritical at the same time. I'm not saying uh, it doesn't serve other people's needs, but it doesn't serve mine. Expectations people don't live up to, and it's just kind of a crowd that I usually don't like to be around. Do you know a lot of people who go to church? Yes. Does it look like that makes a difference in their lives? No. Do you think church is relevant today? It depends, I think. I believe it is. It's more, I think for older people or more mature people actually. Well actually uh, the churches that I've gone to they normally don't, don't address topics that are dealing directly with me. Sometimes I go to church and I feel like it's um, not something I can relate to. And then some of the times when they address topics that do uh, deal with things that I encounter in everyday life they don't they just kind of touch on it and then move on to the next thing. Where the Bible's taught I believe that it can be worked into today's issues and in, in the world around us. Do you think there's anything a church could do to make itself more relevant to you? That's a good question. I have no idea. I don't think I'd go anyway. Do you believe that there's anything a church could do to make itself relevant to you? Um, not really. I don't feel like you have to go to church to be a good person. That's sort of where I stand on that. Just being more flexible and willing to understand that people are people and we do make mistakes and that's just the way it is. There shouldn't be any judgment, it should just be that support group. Somehow try to make things a little bit more adaptable and adapted to today's needs and today's, um, I guess, apprehensions for such a, an unsteady and, and scary world that we live in. Do you go to church? Yes, I do. Why do you believe it's important to go to church? It's changed my life completely um, from someone who was hopeless, uh, had no idea about purpose, I um, was desperate to know what my destiny and purpose was, and it's brought me to a place where I'm growing every day. Um, church has been something that I, I may not even be alive today if it wasn't for church. Um, and there's a number of reasons for this. Uh, the main one being that one of the things I've noticed as a pastor, not only in my congregation, but in other congregations that I've observed, is that there's this very deep, uh, deep, deep anxiety about the state of the church today. Um, it, people are often grieving what the church once was back in the 1950s, back in the 1960s, all the days when when the church was was filled with children and um, filled with people and there were all sorts of programs and things going on and everybody used to come to everything and you know what fun we had and, and now our, our pews are empty and, and nobody comes anymore. What happens is that people then begin come, trying to brainstorm. They start coming up with all these questions. How do we reach people? How do we get people in the door? How do we help people to uh, c come back to church. But I think 
one of the things I've noticed is that people are jumping to this question before they've really examined the question. Before, you know, they're, they're jumping to these things of, oh, of how they want the church to look and how they want the church to be before they have actually examined the question of why do they want the church to look that way? Because in all honesty, before they can start thinking of how they want the church to look, they have to ask the question, why do they want the church to look that way? And so that's when I really began asking this question, why church? Why do we want our pews to be filled? Why do we want people in church? Why do we want to be in church? Why do we maybe not want to be in church? That, that, so that's where that question came from. The reason I think church is important is because worship is the most important thing you will do all week. When we go to church, when we spend our, that hour, one hour Sunday morning, gathering together with other believers to worship the God who has revealed himself to us in Jesus Christ, we are doing the most important thing we will do all week. We are starting off that first hour of the week just in and I believe that it is through worship, through gathering together and praising God and, and listening to God's word and hearing a message proclaimed about that word, that, that we are transformed. And, and that it is, and that we, being the salt and light of this earth, when we as a community are transformed, that is how the world changes. You know, we, we hear all this bad news, all the news. Every, every, uh, every day it's something different and there's all this anxiety. Well, what do we do about it? How do we change the world? How do we, you know, how do we respond? Well, the way we change the world is through worship. It's through putting God as number one, coming together to put God as number one. And through that, we are transformed and we, as the salt and light of this earth, will then begin seeing this world change for the better. We are the salt, we are the light, we are the body of Christ. It is through worship that the world changes and that is why worship is important. It's not just about joining a committee or um, you know, putting an hour here or a dollar here or you know, putting our time in, putting in our punch cards and then going home. No, it is about coming in worship, giving our whole selves to God and through that, beginning to see change in, in the world. Number four, what do you think we miss without church? I think there's a lot. I mean, I think that there's not necessarily uh, a tangible, you know, you can't chart it out in, you know, well, this percent of, of such and such, or, you know, there's not necessarily you know, it's, it's hard to put it into a chart, concrete form, but I do think that there is a lot that we miss without going to church. Um, on, on a basic level, we miss what's going on in our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ's lives. Um, you know, we, we miss, uh, but, mo but even more than that, most importantly, we miss worship. And when we miss worship, we miss that transformative process that happens in us every week. Um, one story, uh, one of the things my parents do, my parents own a cabin up in North Minnesota. And, um, but one of the, and, and they go, they go from time to time, but one of the things they always make sure to do is they always come home on Saturday night so that they can come home, come to church the next day. Um, and this is just something they've always done, something that's very important to them. But there was one weekend when we went to the cabin and we did not do that. We did not come home Saturday night, but we spent all day Sunday at, um, at the cabin. And suddenly, at, you know, as the weekend wore on, tensions were rising and, you know, family issues were coming up and it suddenly all happened, you know, we were, people were crying and yelling at each other and it was just not not good family dynamics. And I remember my mom saying something that all stuck with me. She said, what is going on? And finally she said, you know what? I know what it is. It's because we didn't go to church. In not spending that time in worship, in not re or, you know, settling our lives, focusing our lives the, the, on that first hour of the week, in, in gathering together with other believers to worship God, our lives were altered and, and it wasn't good. 
Um, so, uh, you know, I think that when we do miss church, when we miss that, that important hour of gathering together with other believers, it does have an impact on our lives. It does impact the way we treat our spouse, the way we treat our children, the way we treat our employees, the way we treat our bosses. Um, it, this does have a very huge impact. Um, maybe not something you can chart, but I think that there is a difference. And again, then that impacts how much of a change are we really going to be in the world if we are not seeing ourselves being transformed um, through that habit of worship every week. And then the final question is, what are practical things that people watching this video can do to address these problems? Well, I think on a very practical level, know that gathering together with other believers is the most important thing that you will do all week. Um, I think very often we can make excuses. We can say, well, it's the only day I have to sleep in, or the only, you know, time I have to do laundry, or, you know, and we can get, dis or, or the only time I have to, you know, make meals that I'm going to eat all week, and we can be like, you know, I think of the story of Mary and Martha, where Martha gets so distracted, and, and she's like, running around and trying to make dinner and running around with all these tasks and she's like well you know Mary you're sitting there worshiping at Jesus feet Jesus tell her to help me and Jesus says no you need to pause from your tasks because Mary here is doing the better thing Mary had chosen to pause from the daily tasks from to pause from all the hubbub of life and instead to worship Jesus Somehow they would still eat. Knowing Jesus, he would not have let them starve. You know, somehow the meal would get done eventually. But for now, Martha, what she needed was to pause from all the tasks and to come and spend some time worshiping Christ. Connor, it's time for school. I don't want to go to school. But you have to. No, I don't. If you don't go to school, you won't learn, and you'll be dumb. I'm busy. Get your lazy butt up off that couch that I know you sit on for most of the day. It's comfy. I'm giving you three seconds. I'm not going to school. Two. The education system's bad. Fine. All right, do I have to come there? If no, you don't have to come. You can go away. Pick up some McDonald's. If you don't get off that couch, I'm gonna take away your laptop. Okay. Did you put your laptop down? Yes. All right, give me your phone. I know that's what you go to next. You can't take away my phone. What if something bad happens? I'm I have a flip police. phone for you to use. Nah, that has terrible reception. That's, in three seconds, that's what you're gonna be using. Nah. Three, no. two, one. All right, that's it. I'm fed up, I'm done. School is important. I can't stress that enough. You know, it's heartbreaking. It makes me feel like a failure as a parent when you don't go to school. <sighs> Fine! Connor, it's time to go to church. Have fun. It's important that you come with us. We're all going as a family. I don't feel like it. Alright, I'm gonna want... I'm gonna... I want you to get dressed to look the part when we go to church, all right? I'll be down in two minutes. You better be ready. I won't be. Oh, fine. Don't come. Pick up McDonald's.